Raider basketball is on the air. Hello and welcome to Indiana Farmers Coliseum here in Indianapolis, Indiana for the Horizon League semifinal matchup between the Cleveland State Vikings and the Wright State Raiders. I'm Parker Testa, joined here to my left by Shay Neal. Shay, the Raiders come into this one tonight off of a big comeback win against the Oakland Golden Grizzlies this past Thursday evening. Cleveland State coming in as the defending Horizon League champions. What do you like and what do you not like from both teams tonight? Well, I like the advantage defensively from the Cleveland State Vikings. They play that press zone defense, Parker. It really worked well in the two matchups against the Wright State Raiders this year. Cleveland State forced 26 turnovers in that four-point win at the Netter Center. Wright State's going to need to find a way to take care of the basketball, much like they did against Oakland on Thursday night. They want a shot in this one. What I don't like from Cleveland State is, Parker, the best teams in the conference tournaments are the ones that improve as the season goes and gets hot in March. Cleveland State 5-5 five and five in their last 10 games, lost three of their final five regular season games. This team is a lot more vulnerable than the one we saw in January. Wright State has the talent to beat this team. Now it's all about execution. With the Raiders, what I like, that second half against Oakland was the team that could win this whole thing. The problem is, all year long, they've had trouble getting going out of the gate. They cannot dig themselves a hole against this Cleveland State team. They're too good and will not let the Raiders battle back. Cleveland State is is ranked the number one seed in this tournament. They're 20 and nine overall, coming off an 83 to 67 home win over Robert Morris on Thursday. The quarterfinal win snapped what had been a two-game losing streak for Cleveland State, who closed the regular season by dropping three of its final five games. Wright State dropped both regular season contests against the Cleveland State Vikings. The first coming back on December 4th at Cleveland State, and then in, in the Raiders' eighth game of the year. And then back on January 28th at the Nutter Center, they also lost there as well, 71-67. Wright State has won 11 of the last 16 of the 11 of the in the series. In the series, yes, um, which was the longest series all time in Raider history. The Raiders and the Vikings have met 79 times previously. Wright State coming. Away with 42 wins, the first ever meeting between these two teams came on February 12, 1972, with a Cleveland State win, 72 to 67 in Cleveland. The first match in Dayton came January 21st, 1974, a 69 to 45 Raider win in the third meeting overall. Well, Parker, well, Parker, what I think is really interesting tonight: these two teams have met five times in the Horizon League tournament, including the last time the Raiders won it all. Back in 2018 in the Horizon League Championship game, the Raiders pulled that one out and went to their first NCAA tournament in 11 years. Also, we talk about, you know, there's a common stereotype that this Cleveland State team has a lot of good, but not a lot of great. And, you know, the Horizon League Awards came out and they proved that Cleveland State does have quite a bit of great. Torrey Patton, of course, one of the best players in this conference. He is outstanding, all-league second team. Demoy Hodge, defensive player of the year in this conference. First team all-Horizon League and all-defensive obviously. Trey Gomillion, all-league third team, all-defensive team. This team is great. Deontay Johnson also on the all-defensive team. This team plays elite level defense, and guys that you have with experience like Hodge, like Patton, like Deontay Johnson, it's a team that can win in a lot of different ways. So Wright State comes into this one with very talented guys. Tanner Holden, uh, of course Trey Calvin, Grant Basili, and they're all going to need to play a big part tonight because Dennis Gates is not scared to play 10-12 guys, and those 10-12 guys are all very, very good. Well, it's different to the way Scott Nagy's approach is. You know, he, he the the stereotype with Scott Nagy is that he only plays six or seven guys, and he does. That's 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 what Scott Nagy's done throughout his ent entire career here at Wright State. Um, last time out for Wright State, they used a 20 to nothing run midway through the second half to storm back for a 75 to 63 win over Oakland in the quarterfinals on Thursday night. Tanner Holden led the way with 27 points, 17 of which came in the second half. All, all of those 17 came over the five, the final 12 minutes while he added 10 rebounds. It was 13 for 17 from the free throw line. Grandpa Silly ta tallied 12 of his, eight, of his 18 in the second half. He pulled down 11 rebounds of his own. Trey Calvin had 16 points in that game. And, you know, Andrew Wellage was fantastic. Wellage is big, and he's going to need to be big again tonight. Yeah, he was big in that game for Scott Nagy. He connected 
on a on three three point shots on the way to 11 points off the bench. Who are you looking out for coming off the bench for Wright State tonight? I think it's going to be, you know, interesting. I think Wellage is big. I think Wellage really knocked the lid off the rim for the Raiders when they were struggling in that first half. But a guy that we just got the starting lineup, Parker, a guy that is going to be starting tonight but needs to be big, A.J. Braun, the freshman out of Bishop Fenwick. He's got to be able to help Grant Basile slow down Deontay Johnson, slow down Majak, slow down uh, Marambo. Uh, Cleveland State's maybe the best team in the league in terms of matching up against Grant Basile down in the paint. Uh, and, and now a guy that has started in the last couple contests but will come off the bench tonight. We need to see a lot of decisiveness we need to see a lot of confidence from the true freshman Keaton Norris yeah uh, and, and we both thought Norris would get the start tonight it is not starting lineups for both teams first for Cleveland State Trey Gomillion the guard averaged 10 and a half points per game this season Deshaun Parker the guard averaging 4.3 points this season Tory Patton the senior number 24 averaging 14 points per game this season Demoy Hodge, a very talented guard, averaging 15.4 points per game. And the and the, the forward, Deontay Johnson, averaging 7.5 points with 6.9 rebounds. For Wright State, it is Trey Calvin, Tanner Holden, averaging 20 points per game this season. Tim Finke, the guard, the sharp shooting guard, Tim Finke. The big man, Grant Basile, also Wright State going with a big lineup tonight having both big men in their lineup Basili and rounding out the lineup is going to be A.J. Braun for Scott Nagy's team. Alright, we got a hustle. Score predictions. I'll go first. I'm a big believer in redemption Parker and I think it's the Raiders redemption tour. I think we're destined for the two best rivals in the conference to meet for it all. So that gives you a hint of what I'm picking for tonight. I think it's a Wright State NKU championship. Give me the Raiders tonight. I think they win round three in the most important round. I'm going Wright State 78-71. I think the Raiders win this one tonight as well off of a big game from Tanner Holden. I think he'll have 25 points. Raiders win this one tonight, 81-76. to 76. We're going to step away, folks, for starting lineups in the National Anthem. When we come back, Raider basketball is on the air. Stay with us on WWSC 106.9. Hey, what's going on? It's KF Nash from Hot 102.9 and 1410 Wing AM, and I'm a proud alum of WWSU. You're listening to Wright State Raiders Sports right here on WWSU 106.9 FM, where the Raiders play. Good evening, Raider fans, and welcome to the Indiana Farmers Coliseum here in Indianapolis, Indiana. It's the Wright State Raiders. It's the Cleveland State Vikings in Horizon League semifinal basketball action for you tonight. Again, starting lineups for the Raiders. Trey Calvin, Tanner Holt, Tim Finke, Grant Basile, and A.J. Braun for Cleveland State. It's Trey Gomillion. Deshaun Parker, the senior, very talented senior, Tory Patton, Des Moines Hodge, and Deontay Johnson. I'm Parker Testa, joined here to my left by Shay Neal, just about ready to get underway here in Indianapolis. And Grant Basile will meet Deontay Johnson at half court here. Buzzer sounds. We're ready to go from Indianapolis. Johnson did a great job on Basili back in the Netter Center in late January. Grant's going to have to find a way to find that gear he found on Thursday night. If the Raiders want to go to the championship game, we're underway. Basili wins the tip. Here's Trey Calvin. Calvin swings it to Tanner Holden on the left wing. Holden in the corner to A.J. Braun. Braun moves right. Kick out to Finky, top of the key. Here's Calvin on the right wing. Back to Basile. Tend to shoot. Basile. Nice penetration by Water. Grant, and he lays it in. And that's exactly what Grant needs to do. Deontay Johnson's a great defender, one of the best in this league. But Grant Basile might be the best forward in this league. He's got to play like it. He did on that possession. Here's Hodge. Kick inside. Here's Parker. Back out to Hodge for three. No good. Rebound goes to Braun. Strong start for the Raiders on both ends of the floor. That's a bad shot by Demoy Hodge. Yeah, it was too long for him, I think, and he was still too strong. Basile thought about a three. He won't take nice one. Nice pass. Braun inside. No good. Man, that's one you just got to hit. Great feed by Grant Basile. And A.J. knows he's got to have that. 
Gamillion working inside. Trey Gamillion, tough floater is nice good. Shot there. Nice shot there by Gamillion. Tough shot with the right hand over Basili, knocks it in. First two possessions of the game, I like how the Raiders have come out defensively. Two tough shots by the Vikings. I think if you play like that, it'll be very hard for the Cleveland State offense tonight. Tanner Holden tries to get around the screen. Double team comes, gets it to Finke. Calvin down low. Galvin. And miscommunication there. Gamillion diving for it. And a kick ball is going to be the call. I believe it'll be kicked by Gomillion and it will stay with the Raiders. And that is the call. Good hustle by Gamillion. Raiders narrowly avoid their first turnover of the evening. There's Dennis Gates in his third season as the Vikings head coach. And what a head coach he is. Unbelievable year Cleveland State had last year. Maybe even better this year. Absolutely. Basili, top of the key over to Finky on the left wing. 2-2, 18-14 to go, and this one's taken away by Gomillion. Finky had it poked. Other end, Patton, nice feed to Johnson. He lost it. Patton gets it back and can't get it. Great recovery by the Raiders. Parker. And lost it. Calvin comes away with it. Raider defense coming out strong. 17.56 to go. 2-2 two two is our score. Holden drives. To the free throw line. Basili with it now. Raider fans wanted a blocking foul there on Parker. Basili backing it. down. Floater good. Grant Basili. He's come out aggressive. Parker, I don't remember exactly how aggressive he was in that January game, but I don't think it was this aggressive out of the gate. Love what I'm seeing from double zero. Here's Deontay Johnson. Swings it over to Parker. Back out to Gomillion. Driving on Basili. Gomillion puts the Good shoulder. defense by Basili. He rejects. Gamillion right there. Here comes Trey Calvin spinning. Lost the basketball briefly, but able to maintain control. Pass inside to Braun. Braun lays it in. And Braun almost lost that one again there. He's going to have to be ready, Parker. He's getting in open on that Cleveland State zone. Was able to finish that one, though. Nice start by Wright State on both ends. Raiders out to an early lead here. 17-03 to go. They lead 6-2. Patton to Gomillion. Gomillion draws up a play on the right wing. Johnson guarded by Braun. Johnson right behind the free throw line. Hodge in the corner. The Horizon League Defensive Player of the Year pulls up and hits. Yeah, that's a good play by Hodge. Step back jumper. He'll hit those all day long if you let him. If you let him. Demoy Hodge, Defensive Player of the Year, plus leading the Vikings with 15 points per game. Such a valuable piece. Basili, spin move. Up strong, left that one short, cleans it up. Grant Basili coming out and playing like the Horizon League Player of the Year early in this one. And Basili, of course. That's a foul underneath. I believe it'll go against Calvin. And that's going to be an offensive foul on Hodge. They're going to call. Looks like they called a walk right there. No, that's going to be a foul, Parker. I think it's on Hodge. That is on Hodge, and that's yeah. a big early foul to pick up yeah, by is. Cleveland State's best scorer and best defender. I hesitate to say best player because, I mean, Patton's their leader, but in a lot of ways, Hodge is their best player. So into the game is going to be Keith Norris. He subs in for Braun. We're going to have an official review here. Yeah, I think they're going to review to see if it was like a hook and hold. I believe that's a that's a flagrant foul now in college basketball. I don't think it was anything excessive, but I guess if they if he did hook around Calvin, that could be called a hook and hold. Strong start by the Raiders, though. I like what I'm seeing. Grant Basili off to a great start. Six points, two rebounds, a block. Uh, A.J. Braun has gotten behind the defense a couple times, and they've held the Vikings to just two of five early on in this game. Like what I'm seeing from the Raiders on the defensive end, and like what I'm seeing from the Raiders attacking the paint early. Yeah, and this Cleveland State team prides themselves in being a very good defensive team, and they are, deservingly so. So, I, I like you talked about in the pregame, you just got to go at Cleveland State, and on the defensive end for Wright State, got to gotta play some really some stifling defense on these guys because if you let them hit open shots even if they're open for just a split second they're going to hit the shot absolutely what i like to see and i mean obviously still a ton of time to go in this one we're not even four minutes in but Wright State got off to a strong start in the game at the Netter Center, led by, I believe, 12, 13 points. Let Cleveland State creep back into that game with sloppy turnovers and bad plays, bad shots. Parker, this team is so good, you cannot go into a deficit and come back against Cleveland State. How Wright State's playing so far, they might have a chance to go back up by an 8-10 point margin early in this game. This time, though, they need to figure out how to play with the lead. So it is going to be on Des Moines Hodge. Yeah, and I believe they just called a common foul there. 
So it'll be the first foul on Cleveland State today. Cleveland State comes in as the one seed in this tournament. Wright State comes in as the four seed. A four seed they fought very hard to get, Jay. Yeah, absolutely. They had to play until the last game of the season, Parker, to get that four seed. And they played a very, very good Oakland team in the quarterfinals. And we're down by double digits for a good portion of that game. The Horizon League is a gauntlet this year. And all four of these teams that have earned their trip to Indy have earned their trip to Indy. We have this one, which should be a great game. Earlier today, Parker, we saw IUPUI as well as Cleveland State advance to the women's championship game tomorrow. And then later tonight, another great game that I know we'll be catching, Northern Kentucky and Purdue-Fort Wayne. Hopefully, we find out who the Raiders are playing in the championship. Yeah, fingers crossed for sure. Coming out of the timeout here. And the five on the floor for the Raiders will be Grant Pasilli, Keaton Norris, Tim Finke, Trey Calvin, and... Tanner Holt. Well, I think Scott Nagy, you know, he rolled the dice putting Braun in the starting lineup tonight, and I think he liked what he saw, Parker. They were so focused on Basili that Braun found a couple holes in that zone defense and really helped the right state offense get going here tonight. Here is Grant Basili with it on the right wing. Cross nice pass. Norris. Well, he's open for a three right there. Decides not to take it, though. Here's Trey Calvin. Calvin with it. Working on Parker. Back to Norris. Bounce pass. Finky. About 10 to shoot here for the Raiders. Calvin on the left wing gets a screen from Basili. Calvin nowhere to go. Gets it to Holden. Holden drives. Five to shoot. Floater is no good. Gets his own rebound. Good hustle by Tanner Holden. And he got it knocked out of bounds. It'll stay with the Raiders. That is a great hustle play by Tanner Holden. Chased it down to the corner. Tipped it up off that missed shot. Got there. And then knew he had nobody to throw it to. So he throws it off the leg of Majak. Tanner holding the inbound, 15.49 to go, 8-4, to four, Raiders lead. Cross court, Calvin with it. Calvin, three-pointer, good! Great shot, Trey Calvin, great pass. Grant Basili, Parker, we're five minutes in, not even, but Grant Basili's on another level right now. What a start by the Raiders, it's 11-4. Patton. Basili was six already in this game. I like this matchup, Finky's the Raiders' best wing defender, he's done a great job on Patton so far. Majak guarded by Basili. Hand off Gomillion. Gomillion gets a nice screen. Nice spin move. And Trey Gomillion has four of the six points for Cleveland State. It's another tough shot, though. He had to go over the outstretched Grant Basili. I mean, this defense so far is strong. Yeah, 15 minutes to go in the first half. 11 to 6, right state leads. Keaton Norris hands it off Holden. Now they work right. This is Calvin in the right corner. Hand off Holden. Still have yet to see Holden's uh, score here tonight. And that one tipped inside by Parker. Not the best pass there. Poked back by Holden, but it ends up with Patton. And offensive foul. Basili draws the charge. Yeah, that's a great play by Grant right there. Understood that Patton was going to be driving right to the basket. Gets his feet set. Parker, the charge. UD all-time leading scorer Roosevelt Chapman once told me that a horizon or that a basketball game, a college basketball game, is eight five-minute segments. Wright State dominated that first five-minute segment. They did. Here is Trey Calvin working on Des Moines Hodge. Cleveland State in a full court press here. Calvin right to the rim. Layup good. And Patton and Hodge both with a foul early on, and the Vikings find themselves down seven. And Calvin and Basili carrying the Raider offense so far. They've combined for all 11 of the 13. Raiders off to a hot start here, and you could argue that that was one of the selling points for Scott Nagy before the game. Hot start. Gamillion driving on hold. Nice move. Blocked by Basili. Majak's going to chase it down. Majak, the big seven foot two center from Hamilton Southeastern High School, about 20 minutes from here. Stoppage in play there. What's the call? Are we going to have another review here? We're about to have Marambo check into the game for the Vikings. We're see what the officials are discussing here. Are they checking to see if that was a goaltend or? Wright State side of the court. It's applauding something. We're not sure what it is. I think they were just checking to see that wasn't a goaltend, and they said it was a clean block by Basili. He's second in the game already. So we'll play on five to shoot. 
Here's Marambo going up against Wilborn. Only two to throw it up, and great defense by the Raiders. Parker Marambo had no idea how much time was on the clock. He didn't. Had his back turned to the stanchion. Couldn't even see the clock. It's very rare that we see Scott Nagy smiling, Parker, and he isn't right now. But you got to think underneath that beard and that, you know, that, uh, that serious look on his face, he's got to be really happy with how his team's playing right now. Calvin to Norris on the left wing. Back to Calvin. Into the hands of Tanner Holden. Calvin top of the key. Over to Norris. Finky, Finky. let it fly. He got it! Raiders with a 10-point lead as Finky drills it. Yeah, and that's his shot, Shay. That corner three has been money for him his entire career, and he continues to show why right there. Patton, tough shot up against two Raiders. And really, all but that, except for the Hodge jumper, Parker, three of the four shots made by Cleveland State was through great defense. Here's Drake Calvin now to Norris. Norris back to Calvin. Raiders have figured out something with this zone early. They have 16 points already and lead by eight. Norris and Calvin, a little back and forth action here. Calvin, nice step move. back, three pointer. Good! Calvin with a tray. Raiders lead by 11 here, 13 minutes to play, first half. And Parker, he just went one on one, mano a mano. May I have this dance with one of the best defenders in the league, Trey Gomillion. Here's Marambo with it now. Hands it to Torrey Patton. Guarded by Finky. Patton. Nice move by Torrey Patton. Driving. Nice pass, but it, Marambo wasn't ready for it. Here comes Wright State. Calvin to Finky. Down nice low. Five. Holden. Holden. Reverse layup. No. Rebound goes to Trey Gomillion. And a foul underneath. I think that's going to go against Holden. Both of them collided, and it was really a 50-50 ball there, but they're going to call the foul on Holden. And they will call it on Holden. I guess they're going to say Holden was in the process of boxing out and maybe hip-checked Gamillion there. Well, let's see the replay here. I think that's a 50-50 ball. I don't know. It's close. I think there was more contact on Holden's end than Gamillion's end. Yeah, that's true. But, yeah. I mean, nobody really had possession of that ball, Parker. You, you kind of just got to let him go. Well, we appreciate you hanging out with us on this Monday evening. It's Horizon League semifinal action here at the Indiana Farmers Coliseum in, 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 in Indianapolis. And we appreciate you being here at the start. We appreciate the Raiders being ready for the start. Yep. They've come out and been outstanding. Here is... Marambo against Braun. I think this is a matchup that the Vikings like. And they get it to Marambo inside. Braun, good defense there. And what's the call underneath? Both coaches were kind of confused there. And I believe they're going to call it a foul against Wellage. Foul is the Raiders. It is on Wellage. New into the game, Andrew Wellage. Comes in for a second, picks up a foul. Willage subbed in for Tim Finke. A.J. Braun comes in. Marambo's first free throw is good. Parker, the story of this one so far has to be Raiders up 11, but they're shooting 62% against a defense that's bothered them all year. Calvin and Basili have combined for 14 on 6 of 7 shooting. They've come out ready for sure. Marambo's second free throw, good. Raiders lead by 9 here. 12.05 to go first half in Indianapolis. Keaton Norris. And now here, Cleveland State starting to play that full court press zone that really troubled the Raiders. Norris for 3. Got it! The Raiders cannot be stopped right now. And that's unbelievable, Shea. He hit that shot from about 29 feet. Three, he hit it from the Keeps logo. He hit it from 3 feet behind the 3 point line. Raiders by 12. Keaton Norris, Mr. Freshman delivers. Inside they go to Chameleon. Nice pass. Tipped by Calvin. The Raiders are clicking, and they've got a 12-point lead. And we've come to our media timeout at the end of 12 marker. Raider Nation, your team's balling out. They, Don't go anywhere. They absolutely are. We'll pause with our score. Wright State 22 and Cleveland State 10. You're listening to Wright State Raider basketball on your home for Raider sports, WWSU. 106.9 FM. Parker Testa, Shane Neal back here at Indiana Farmers Coliseum where our score is Wright State 22 and Cleveland State 10 with 11.36 to go in the first half. Shea, the Raiders have come out to a hot start shooting 9 for 14 yep. overall. 4 for 4 from the three-point line shooting 64%. Yeah, Calvin's hit two, Norris has hit one, as well as, uh, who was the other one that hit one? Finky hit one. Uh, but, Parker, this is in the words of Blake Schumacher, Wright State writer for Horizon 
roundtable, and I completely agree with him. A three-point shooting right State team, where was this literally all season? Yeah, but they, they picked a great time for it to come out. Right, right. Yep. It's, been, it's been a fun one so far. Finky's hit his shot. I think the play of the game so far, Parker, Grant Basile come out to a great start, went right at Deontay Johnson in the paint, I think really threw Cleveland State off guard, but the play that stuck with me so far, Trey Gamillion, one of the best defensive guards in this conference, Trey Calvin said, may I have this dance, and drilled a step back three right in the face of Trey Gamillion. Yeah, just before the break, Keith Norris hit one as well from the Keeps logo here at the Indiana Farmers Coliseum, about 30 feet from the right. basket. And we talked about this during the break, Parker. They got off to a similar start at the Netter Center, and they let that lead slip away. They have to figure out how to play with a lead. But this is a great start. They're not going to shoot 64% the whole game, but they have to figure out how to play up 10. Good defense here so far. Finch tune drives in, and he's fouled. And that'll be that's a smart foul on Braun. Didn't made sure he didn't finish inside and make sure he earns it at the line. So Finch will go to the line. Finstoon looks like he was lined up for a slam right there and then got rejected by A.J. Braun. And Braun really got probably about 80% ball, but he did get enough of Finch's arm that that's a textbook foul call. Finstoon at the line here. First free throw, good. Yeah, and that's a pure form, Parker. That was nothing but net. The net didn't even really move on that one, so... Scott Nagy there sitting on the bench. His team up 11, and of course, Scott Nagy looking as Scott Nagy as ever, but... You gotta love where this team's at right now with a 10 point lead. So Raider basketball as Andrew Wellage has it. Guarded here by Woodridge. Wellage gets it across. Gets it to Basile, that one tipped. And Finch with a steal and slam on the other end. And Parker, this is what happened at the Netter Center. You cannot give Cleveland State easy scores like that. No, they can't. This is what we saw early in that Oakland game. Wellage lost it. They're going to say it was tipped. Get it to Basili. Basili fakes and now sends and hits. Big shot, Basili, as he drills it after Finch bit on the pump fake. And that's a shot that silences that momentum Cleveland State started to get. Raiders by 11, 10, 45 to go, 25, 14. Wright State's hit their first five threes in this game, Parker. They picked a very good time to turn into the Warriors. Finch Dune gets it over here to Parker. Parker down low to Marambo. Backs down A.J. Braun. Nice double team coming, and nice pass to Finston. Finston's got a quick six off the bench, and the Vikings are within nine. Here comes Wright State. Wellage with it now. Wellage drives. Looking for a pass target. He'll get it to Basili. Basili on Finston. I like this matchup. Let's see if he backs him down. Braun inside. Marabo. Braun, turn around. Now when he had his pocket picked by Parker and here comes Cleveland State. And Braun held it too long, Parker. When you're down in the post like that, you gotta make a decision and Hill will go to the free throw line as he's fouled inside. Vikings trying to wake up a little bit. 25-16 our score, 9.58 to go. First half here at the Horizon League semifinal. That foul was called on Keaton Norris, his first. Raiders had three turnovers in that game against Oakland, only three. That's unbelievable. They have four in 10 minutes against Cleveland State. Of course, they had 26 in that game back in January as Hill misses the first. Parker, they're on pace to have about 15 here tonight. That's still not where you'd like to be at, but overall they've done a lot better taking care of the ball than they did back in January. They have, and, and Scott Nagy really prides his, his teams on that. They need to protect the basketball. They need to play solid defense. And one thing that Wright State teams tend to do is they tend to get a little bit lax. If they get up like this by 9 or 10 or 12, it's, they tend to, you know, kind of just lay off the, come off the gas a little bit and kind of relax. You can't do that against a Cleveland State team like this. They're very good, and next thing you know, you'll be you'll be only have a two-point lead, maybe even be trailing. And there's a foul on Parker. Holden draws the contact. That'll be Parker's first, Cleveland State's third. So only three fouls in the first ten minutes for the Vikings, but they're three important fouls. Parker, Hodge, and Patton all with one. Right State 25-17, leading this one here by eight with 9.51 to go in the first half. Holden will inbound. A lot can happen in 10 minutes, Parker. That one's tipped out of bounds. It will stay with the Raiders. Cleveland State really thought they had a turnover there. And I thought they did, too. It looked like Finky touched it. goes out of bounds, but we're sitting up on the concourse, so it's hard to tell from up here. But 
Raider basketball to inbound again, and here's Holden. Braun out. Norris back in. Holden inbounds to Calvin in the corner. Calvin moves right. Calvin's the best ball handler on this team, Parker. He's really got to be the one that brings it up, and Cleveland State knows that. That's why they're double-teaming him. Norris. Tough defense by Finstoon. Here's Finky. Back in down to Moy Hodge. Finky, and that's going to be knocked out of bounds. Raider basketball with six to shoot. Demoy Hodge showing why he's her Eisen League player, defensive player of the year, Parker. His hands always in the passing lanes. That's already his third or fourth deflection of the game. Deontay Johnson back in for Marambo. And Trey Calvin will inbound here for Wright State. Vasily and Calvin have combined for 17. Cleveland State as a team has scored 17. Calvin inbounds. Norris. Norris thought about a three. He won't take one. Four to shoot. Holden drives. Floater. No good. Left Rebound. It short. Goes to Hodge. And I really think Norris had to pull the trigger on that shot. That was really the best look they were going to get. Out of bounds. It'll stay with the Vikings. And this is one thing that's dangerous, Shay. If you let Cleveland State get out in these fast breaks and move really quick on you, you will not hold the lead for very long because this is what they're really good at. Absolutely. Torrey Patton back into the game for Woodrich. And really, Parker Finston brought this team, you know, kind of woke him up a little bit. He scored six in his first two minutes off the bench. And got this team back within single digits. Now they're playing a lot tougher as that pass goes long for Deontay Johnson. And the Vikings turn it over for the sixth time tonight. Forcing turnovers is the name of the game for Wright State tonight. They need to force turnovers. And, and, and I guess if you're going to turn the ball over 15 times and win, it helps if you force the other team to turn it over 15 times. Yeah, absolutely. Calvin with it now. 9-12 to go. Raiders by 8, 25-17. Love to see Calvin or Basili get a look here. Cal Those two have been on another level here so far tonight. Calvin setting up a play here. Calvin, step back, jumper, three, no, rebound goes to Johnson. Heat check for Trey Calvin. He hadn't missed yet tonight. I don't mind that shot. Trey Calvin's a guy that can hit that. Patton lost it, got it back just before it hit the baseline. Finston gets a screen. Alley-oop, and Basili met him at the rim. Holden. How's that not a foul? Johnson was like on his back. Scott Nagy's not happy with it. But nonetheless. They get it over half court, I guess. Calvin. Calvin will hand it off to Keaton Norris. Norris moves left. Norris drives on Smaller Johnson. Johnson on him, yep. Calvin for three. No. Rebound goes. That's a foul underneath on the Vikings. Holden draws it. And a great effort by Tanner Holden. I like Trey Calvin's aggressiveness, Parker. I don't care if Calvin shoots 10, 12 threes tonight because the Raiders need an outside spark. And I really think Calvin can hit five or six of those. He can, for sure. He's been the more the most consistent Look shooter. Look at Basili meeting him at the rim. What a play. He's been the most consistent shooter for Wright State all season has been Trey Calvin. And we'll have... Tanner holding the inbound here. Raiders have slowed down a little bit since their onslaught at the start of the game. Nice feed inside to Holden, and he's fouled by Johnson. Another just outstanding pass by Grant Basile. And if you're Cleveland State, that's the last guy you want to foul right there. Holden leads the nation in free throws made. Shooting a very respectable 77% for a forward, and that's a clear foul. And now four fouls, or five fouls, excuse me, on the Vikings, Parker, but they're on, they're big, they're big fouls. Hodge has one, Patton has one, now Johnson has one. So a lot of the starters picking up early fouls. First free throw by Holden is good. Tanner's first point of the night, and Parker, you got to feel like Tanner Holden's the kind of guy, he sees that ball go through the net one time and it wakes him up. He's missed his first four shots here tonight, but one free throw might be enough for number two to turn it on. And if number two turns it on, along with Basili and Calvin, this Raider team is not going to only be really tough to beat tonight. They're going to be really tough to beat tomorrow, too. Absolutely. Second free throw for Holden coming up. Holden takes a couple dribbles. Free throw, good as well. And I believe going back to the end of that Oakland game, Parker, he's now made like 11 consecutive free throws. And yes, I probably jinxed that, but I thought it was worth noting. Ever since halftime of that Oakland game, when he was two of six at the break, Tanner's been locked down. And this Cleveland State team is very good. They started the year. They started the year ten and one. They're five and five to finish the year. So we'll see how the Raiders, if the Raiders can continue to fend them off here. Norris. Gomillion had another tough shot over Basili. Basili right to the rim, reverse layup. He tried it, no good. Gets his own rebound. And I wonder, how is that not a foul right there? But nonetheless, 
Here comes Torrey Patton. It's poked away, but a foul. That'll be Calvin's first. And that'll bring us to immediate timeout. Raiders got off to a hot start, and they're playing tough with the Cleveland State Vikings. Our score, Wright State 27, Cleveland State 19. We'll be right back in Indianapolis. Back here at Indiana Farmers Coliseum, where our score is Wright State 27 and Cleveland State 19. 7.41 to go first half. Parker Testa, Shady alongside with you tonight from the Farmers Coliseum here in Indianapolis. Here, back in action here is, well, it looked like Trey Calvin poked it away, but it's going to remain Cleveland State basketball. Calvin poked that ball, and I think it hit the ref's whistle there. Just what, the, something, that's, uh, uh, something that's I've noticed, Parker, the Raiders have taken seven more shots than the Vikings here so far tonight. A big reason why they're up eight. Gomillion working on, on Tanner Holden. Gomillion moves left, drives. Gomillion shot with the right hand. No, rebound Finstoon. Actually, it's Johnson who puts it back up and in. You cannot give Cleveland State three opportunities. They're back within six as we creep down to seven minutes to go in the first half. Norris to Holden on the left wing. Holden guarded by Brock Finstoon. Holden drive, double team comes, but silly for three, short. Rebound goes to Gomillion. Vikings playing with pace here, trying to get back into this one. Patton sends it for three, in and out. And if that one went down, Cleveland State fans would have made the building quite loud. The Raiders are over their last five uh, over the last few minutes. Need a big shot from one of the big three here. Norris. Finky had it poked by Patton. Gets it back. Calvin, good luck. That's his shot. No, no, Finky on the glass. Blocked. And out of bounds, it'll stay with the Raiders. So, Red State over their last six. Haven't scored in over four minutes. So, if you're Scott Nagy, after that hot start, scoring has been few and far between for the Raiders. They get it into Wilborn. Wilborn gets a double team instantly, and a jump ball is called. Possession to Cleveland State. Great double team trap right there on the inbound play, drawn up by Dennis Gates. The Vikings will get it back. They're down by six, with six and a half even in the first half. Raiders got off to a 22 to 10 lead since then. 11-5 run by the Vikings to cut that in half. Patton, Patton with it now. Drive. Shot blocked by Wilborn. Nice block by Wilborn right there. That's Here. redemption. Turned it over. Gets a block on the other end. Here comes Calvin. Calvin driving. Moves left on the baseline pass. Taken away by Patton. Here comes Cleveland State. Hodge kicks. Back to Hodge in the corner for three. Got it. Demoy Hodge, tough shot, able to drill it, and the Vikings have come all the way back, and they're back within one possession. It's 27-24. Here's Tanner Holden. 7-0 run here by Cleveland State. Gets it to Norris. Norris, double team comes, then backs off. Here's Finky, guarded by Torrey Patton. Finky drives. That's going to be a kicked ball out of bounds. Wright State keeps possession. 11 on the shot clock. <laughs> Raiders so far tonight have six turnovers, so do the Vikings. Raiders shooting 43% here in the first half. Cleveland State at 47%. Hodge has five, Gomillion with six. Patton only two points here tonight for the Raiders. It's nine for Basili, eight for Calvin, and three for Finky. Inbounding here is Braun. That one's poked away, and that's Cleveland State basketball. Yeah, Braun was the last to touch that one. And the Cleveland State defense is very, very active in the passing lanes here in these last couple minutes. Wright State's got to figure something out quick. Cleveland State on a 7 nothing run over the last two and a half minutes. Wright State coming apart at the seams here. Eerily similar to what we saw in the Netter Center. Just back on Thursday night, very similar. I meant the Cleveland State game back at the Netter Center. Oh, that's also true, yeah. Gamillion fakes the three. Step back for the tie. It's off. Fight for the rebound. Kept alive. Hodge for the tie. And it's a little too strong holding the rebound. 
Five minutes to go first half. Raiders could use a six, eight-point swing here. Good defense on that possession by Wright State. Here comes Calvin. Calvin, jumper, no good. Rebound controlled. Out of bounds, actually, and it'll stay. Or actually, Cleveland State takes it. They're going to say off Basili. And Calvin, after hitting his first three, has missed his last four. Torrey Patton back into the game for the Vikings. He'll bring it up. He's joined out there by Finston Hodge, Johnson, and Gomillion. Patton looking on Tim Finke. Gets it to Hodge. Vikings down only three. Deontay Johnson behind the three-point line. Very rare you see him out that deep. And that is an offensive foul against Finston. Nice play by Tanner Holden. Nice job by Tanner to set his feet right there. Knew that Finston was going to be coming in. Sets his feet, takes the charge, and the Raiders get the basketball. And they need, they desperately need a bucket right here. They do. They need a quick four or six point swing. Get this back up to, you know, seven, eight points lead. They played so well at the start. And if Cleveland State can go into the half, you know, within one possession, that's a win for the Vikings. Here comes Trey Calvin now. Guarded by Hodge. Calvin will drive. Finstoon on him now. Calvin trying to look for a passing target here. He'll get it to Holden down low. Holden, turn around. Loses the basketball. Keeps, keeps it alive, though. 10 to shoot. Finky jumper from the mid-range. Good. And Tim Finky's hit both of his shots tonight, Parker. And that was a bucket that Wright State desperately needed. Had gone four minutes without scoring before that. And the Wright State fans on their feet here at the Farmers Coliseum. They need this crowd to get into it. The crowd saved them against Oakland. Can the crowd save them again against Cleveland State? Gamillion lost the ball. Raiders with a steal. Here comes Calvin pushing. Finky sets his feet. Fakes. Nice fake by Tim Finky. Basili straight on three. Left it a hair short, but a foul underneath on the Vikings as Holden is pushed. That'll bring us to our under four timeout. Our score, Wright State 29 and Cleveland State 24. We'll be right back. Back here at the Indiana Farmers Coliseum, Parker Testa, Shea Neal, where our score, Wright State 30. As Tanner Holden hits the free, first free throw in Cleveland State 24. Wright State had gone on a four-minute scoring drought before, that, before the last shot they made. And second free throw by Holden, good as well. That's a big four-point swing there by the Raiders. The Vikings had it down to one possession. Another stop and score here. The Raiders basically have it built up back up to double digits. You'd love to have that seven-plus point lead at halftime. Morombo working on A.J. Braun. Morombo gets it over to Torrey Patton. Great by Overall great defense in this first half by Wright State. Here's Trey Gomillion on the outside. Drive. Pass to Patton. Long three-pointer. No. Airballed it. Goes out of bounds. And that's great defense by Wright State. If Cleveland State's best shot on a possession, Parker, is a Torrey Patton three from the Keeps logo, Wright State's playing some pretty dang good defense. Holding inbounds to Trey Calvin. 3.16 to go first half. Wright State 31, Cleveland State 24. And I think it's a mistake by Dennis Gates that he's playing back now again on defense. I think Wright State struggled more with that full court press. So that's out of bounds and will stay with the Raiders. It looked like they were more uncomfortable with that press, Parker, but Gates is now kind of calling off the dogs a little bit, and I think it's gotten Wright State going again. Calvin will inbound, and he gets it in to Tanner Holden. It's guarded by Brock Finston. Cross court, Calvin. Calvin drives on Gomillion. Calvin, offensive foul on Trey Calvin, and the Cleveland State takes possession. That'll be the second on Calvin. That was on the Raiders number one, Trey Calvin, the second, six on the team. Trey Calvin can't, got out to a great start. He struggled a little bit since then, Parker, but all in all, if this team's going to be successful, the big three need to be aggressive, and I love how aggressive Trey Calvin's been tonight. Here's Marambo again. Marambo has yet to be a major factor today. He has two points both on free throws. Parker going at Norris. Double team comes. Gets it to Gomillion. Hodge. Three on the right wing. Left it short. Rebound Basili. Stop and scores. This is what Wright State needs. Now they got the first part done. They just need to score here. Norris. Double team comes. Gets it to Basili. 
Silly drives. Come, coming in with a full head of steam, going right at Marambo, but lost it going up, but a foul is called. Hodge wants a jump ball, but they're going to call a foul, I believe, on Finston. And that'll send Grant Basile to the free throw line. Vikings, the defense right now, or the difference in this game right now, Parker, is the, dis the difference in three-point shooting. Raiders 5 of 10 from beyond the arc. Vikings just 1 of 7. Other than that, it's been almost identical. Red State 31-24, 227 to go first half. Grant Basile goes to the free throw line. First shot, good. Raiders are going to have to hit free throws if they want to beat a team with the talent of Cleveland State. Strong start tonight, 5 of 5 at the line. And Basile's second free throw on the way. But before that, we're going to have a substitution. Andrew Willage will check in for A.J. Braun. Wellage would love to see Wellage get a couple, you know, looks at the end of this first half. I think he could be a real impact player off the bench. Basile, second free throw off the mark. Finky rebound. Wellage on the outside. Wellage will get it to Tanner Holden. Holden trying to go up drives much right. Marambo, but a walk. Holden claiming that he, you know, he had the ball tipped, but Basile splits the pair. Finky tries to keep that possession alive. Finky already now with two offensive rebounds in this first half, but Raiders can only have an eight-point lead, 32-24, with 2.15 to go in this first half. I think if you can if you can keep it at seven plus, that's a great place to be against this Cleveland State team. 32-24, 206 to go first half. Here's Hill working on Keaton Norris back out to Finstoon. Finstoon over to Hill in the corner. Hill step back. Fake a three. Now he takes one and it is no good. Rebound fought for and taken by Basili. What a play by Grant Basili. Gomillion knocked him out of bounds, and Basili throws it right off the leg of Trey Gomillion. A heads up play by Basile. And Gamillion, such a he's an emotional player, Parker. It's the best part of his game. He plays with a lot of heart, a lot of passion. He is furious that that happened to him. <laughs> right State fans have made the trip here to Indianapolis, and they're allowed for the Raiders. And last second, you know, that became a little bit more difficult. So congrats and, uh, you know, big appreciation to all the Raider fans that made it here tonight. Absolutely. Here is Tim Finke over to Holden. Holden gets it to Wellage at the top of the key. Back to Holden. Norris in the corner. Like Norris. The ball, like the ball movement here by the Raiders. Keaton Norris, Norris moves over to Basile. Gets it down low to Holden. Six to shoot. Holden trying to direct traffic. Holden. Two to shoot. Basile for three. Got it! Big shot, Grant Basile. The Raiders are back up 11 with a minute 15 to go in the first half. Holden trying to get him fired up. The Raiders trying to take some momentum into the locker room. Basile going right at Deontay Johnson. Tough three by Parker. He left it short. Gamillion able to track it down and missed it. And a foul against Gamillion. That's his second. And Parker, very similar to Jamal Kane. Trey Gamillion's the kind of guy that if things start going not his way, it can really get in his head. And that's just a, that's a, that's a frustration foul right there. Red State by 11, 35, 24, 59 seconds to go here in the first half. Because that's going to give Grant Basile two shots. Just keep adding on to that lead. I can't stress that enough. you got to keep adding to that lead because if you get a little bit lax, next thing you know, it's a two-point game, and Cleveland State, uh, more times than not, have won those two-point games. Absolutely. Basile at the free throw line for two shots. What a first half for Grant Basile. 14 points, six rebounds, two blocks. He's just been, he's been great. He's been everything the Raiders have needed him to be. Basile for the second shot of a one and one, and he hits. We're gonna have lane violations. Lane violations. That second free throw will not count. So it's 36-24. If the Raiders can get one more stop here, Parker, they can hold for that last shot and have a double digit lead going into the break. I think they really gotta like where they're at. Here is Johnson, gets to Parker on the right wing. Guarded by Holden, back to Johnson. Left a lot of room. Good defense here by the Raiders. Here's Hill driving on the baseline. Hill stepped on the baseline. They're gonna call a foul against Norris. Raider fans do not like it. But it is a foul. 
against Keaton Norris, and I believe that's going to send Hill to the line. It will. So one and one for Hill. Hill is one of two at the line tonight. He has one point in four minutes. One and one. Missed free throw here could be big for Wright State. An empty possession once again for Cleveland State. Parker, they're one of their last 10. Wright State's on a 9-0 run after Cleveland State got it down to three. Yeah, Hell Hill at the line here for the one and one. Cleveland three. State has not scored a point in the last five minutes and 17 seconds. Free throw for Hill, good. 36-25, second free throw coming. For Yahel Hill. Hill on the season averaging about seven points a game off the bench. Second free throw for Hill, good as well. Ten point game, right state by 36 26, 40 and a half seconds to go in the first half. Raiders can hold it till about 10 seconds left in the half. I'd say that's less important though than just getting the best shot you possibly can. Make sure you have a double digit lead going to the break. They've played their hearts out for 20 minutes, and I think they should be rewarded with a double-digit trip to the locker room. Here's Norris with it, guarded by Hill. 25 seconds remaining in the first half. 12 to shoot. No play coming yet. Here we go, Trey Calvin. Calvin gets it to Holden. Holden cross-court, Norris. Norris drives. Back out to Finky, poked away by Finstoon. Not able to save it, though, and Wright State keeps possession one second on the shot clock. Yeah, and this is going to be have to want, be one of those inbound chuck it up kind of things. If they even have enough time for that. In for the Vikings, 35, Deontay Johnson. Deontay Johnson back into the game along with Majak. This is a big, big lineup for Cleveland Wright State. State. And Scott Nagy's going to call a timeout. Raiders by 10. They've held the Vikings to 35% in this first half. Parker, in the first five minutes, the offense was the star. But in the full 20 minutes, the defense has been spectacular. They have. And, you know, that's what you got to do. Keep this Cleveland State team from scoring because they're very good at it. Um, you know, and, and they can kind of come at you from all ways. Cleveland State, a very good defensive team, stifling defense all around. Uh, but they can also score at will. So this is why you gather, you gather a lead and you do whatever you have to do to preserve that lead. Play stout defense. Keep pressure on Cleveland State. Things are looking good for Wright State so far in the first 20. Absolutely. Matt from Horizon Roundtable, friend of the station, just tweeted, Wright State has played a really good half, but they're going to have to do it again. This Cleveland State team is not going to go away, and I agree with him 100%. Absolutely. What makes this Cleveland State so team so dangerous, Parker, is this team's capable of playing really, really good basketball for 40 minutes. Yeah, they certainly can. I mean, it's not – you've seen teams that are just one-half teams, and this isn't one of them. They play the full court. Hold an inbound. Holden, not a shot. Taken away by Cleveland State, and there's a whistle. Yeah, they're just going to say, I think, shot clock violation. They're going to make Cleveland State re-inbound it. Vikings will have about nine seconds. A uh, score here for Cleveland State could be big. If they can get this down to seven or eight, obviously an eight-point lead at the half still nice for Wright State. But when they've led by 10 or 12 for a good portion of this first half, I think if Cleveland State can go into the locker room down eight, it feels a lot better than being down 12. Officials reviewing the clock right here. They're trying to figure out how much time was on the clock for that shot clock violation. And Looks like there should be maybe like 9.9, .9, maybe 10. They will put 10 and a half seconds on the clock. And Dennis, it looks like Dennis Gates called a timeout there. So Coach Gates wanting to talk it over with his team on how they'll handle the final ten and a half of this first half. Now, the Raiders can still clean up quite a bit of their game, Parker. They do have 11 turnovers in this first half. So on pace for another 20 turnover performance, which is not what you want to see. But... You know, in that first or that matchup against Cleveland State at the Netter Center, Cleveland State was able to get it all the way down to, I believe, four points at that half. And uh, this one, Wright State's done a nice job of keeping that double-digit lead all the way up until halftime. Yeah, they absolutely have. Ten seconds on the dot is what they will confirm with the clock operator. So ten seconds to go, first half. Wright State by 10, 36-26. It's Cleveland State basketball. And we're going to have number 11. That is Logan Woodridge. Woodridge. He will inbound it here. Cleveland State does have some funky inbound plays. 
that we've seen on social media throughout the course of the season. We'll see what they draw up here. They get it in the hill. Don't foul here. You don't need to foul. Here comes Hill. Five seconds. Hill. Hill. Good defense. That back jumper off the mark. You'll and take that if you're right state. That's great defense. And that is how we will hit the halftime break, folks. We will be back in approximately eight minutes for the WSC Raider halftime show. We pause our score. Wright State 36 and Cleveland State 26 at the halftime break. Don't go anywhere. Stay with us on WWSC 106.9. Hello, I'm an artificial British person with a radio voice you wish you had. Vanel Adam. Halftime here at the Indiana Farmers Coliseum. I'm Parker Testa, joined here by Shania. Wright State leads 36 to 26. Just about underway in the second half here at the Farmers Coliseum. Stati some statistics from that first half. Grant Pacilli leads all scorers, 14 points, 5 for 10 shooting, 2 for 4 from the three-point line, and 2 for 3 from the free throw line. Throw in six rebounds to Grant's stat line. Eight for Trey Calvin, four for Tanner Holden, five for Tim Finke, and two for A.J. Braun for Cleveland State. Leading all scorers in points is Trey Gomez, and he has six. Hodge with five, Johnson with two, Patton with two. Shay, what's the keys to the game for Cleveland State in this second half to get back into it? Well, the reason why Cleveland State got back into it, you know, the, back at the Netter Center, Parker, was because they were able to slow down Basile, and that's what they need to do here. In that first half, Grant Basile wasn't only the best player on the court, he might have been the best player left in this tournament. And if he continues to do that, Wright State's going to be playing for a championship tomorrow night. If Cleveland State can find a way to slow him down, watch for the Vikings to come back fast. Tor, uh, excuse me, Tanner Holden will inbound here to Grant Pasilli. We're underway for the second half of the Horizon League semifinals in Indianapolis. Trey Calvin with it. Calvin working on Des Moines Hodge. Moves left. Here comes Tory Patton. Calvin, nice stop and start move. Double team comes. Calvin will get it inside. Nice pass to Basile, and he lays it in. That's unlucky right there for Cleveland State. He was trying to hit Braun. Johnson read it beautifully, but tipped it right to Basile. Raiders by 12, 19.30 to go. Parker, to win the Horizon League tournament, you need a lot of skill and a little bit of luck. That was a little bit of luck there for Wright State. Yeah, and they needed it too. Here is Torrey Patton. He'll get it to Johnson. Johnson back to Patton. Patton. Nice take. Nice block by Finky. Here comes Tanner Holden. Holden slows down, though. Raiders are playing with a lot of confidence Basile right now. Inside to Braun. Lays it and in. on Braun. Showed brains and Braun on that play, and he's going to the line for a three point play. Great pass by Basili, and it all started. Parker Torrey Patton made a great play to get into the paint, but what a recovery by Tim Finke getting the block. AJ Braun goes to the free throw line here. First free throw for Braun is off the mark. No good. Rebound goes to Patton. And even with that missed free throw, this is a great start to the second half of the Raiders. Now their largest lead of the game at 14. Go million for three in the corner. No rebound, Calvin. Cleveland State really needed that shot. Calvin double team trying to beat Gomillion to the sideline. Cannot, but finds Finky, who finds Basile. Raiders beat the press. Basile, nice fake. Has it poked from behind. Gets it back. Holden. Cleveland State swarming, but just cannot get that last poke. Still plenty of time to get a good shot here. Eight seconds on the clock. Calvin crossover. Now working on this bigger Johnson floater. Left it a little short. Deontay Johnson taps it out to Basile. Here comes Calvin. New shot clock for the Raiders. Raiders have outscored the Vikings 4-0 here in the second half. They lead it by 14. Finky with it now. Guarded by Parker. What Parker's. a feed by Finky. It's called a block. And that's a great recovery by Cleveland State. That was a great play drawn up by the Raiders. That's good offense and just better defense. Looked like Holden was going to have an easy layup, but had it blocked from behind by, I believe, Des Moines Hodge. And hey, if you're going to be named Horizon League Defensive Player of the Year, your team's down 14, you got to make plays like that. What a play by Hodge. Here comes Trey Gomillion, 18.08 to go in the second half here at the Indiana Farmers Coliseum. Parker Testa, Shea Neal, along with you tonight on this Monday. Here's Yahel Hill. Hill will get it to Johnson. 
His turnaround hook shot, no. Rebound back out to Johnson. And that's the third on Gomillion. He's getting a little too frustrated out there, Parker. And one more foul against Gomillion could really, really hurt the Vikings. He's not only their point guard, he's one of their leaders, and he's their best wing defender. 40 to 26, Wright State lead. 17.52 to go in the game. And here comes Trey Calvin. The offense, I mentioned this at the end of the first half, Parker. The offense has been a lot of, you know, streaky tonight for the Raiders, as it's been all year. There's been moments where it's looked great. There's been moments where they've struggled. But from beginning of the game to end. Calvin so for three in the corner. Got it! From beginning of the game until now, the Raider defense has been top tier, and it's allowed this offense to be streaky and still have a 17-point lead. Raiders by 17, 17, 19 to go as Dennis Gates wants a timeout. And the Raider bench is fired up, Parker, and they should be. This Raider team has been dominated by Cleveland State all year. They've come out tonight, and they've punched the one-seed defending champs in the mouth. 43-26, Wright State. And it has been all Raiders throughout the game here on this semifinal night. We wondered coming in how they were going to prepare to play this very good Cleveland State team. Well, and, and, they, and they've done all you could have asked and more. They have. And dare I say it's been all Basili and Calvin, Parker. Those two guys have outscored Cleveland State. Basili and Calvin have dropped 27. Cleveland State has 26. You say, you mention it all the time, Parker. You need to execute. You need to be a strong team. You need to be well coached to win this tournament. But you do need to have stars to win big games in college basketball. Wright State stars have come up to play tonight. Tanner Holden not having his best game, but he's playing tough like he always does. Basili has been outstanding, and Trey Calvin has gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with Trey Gomillion. And more times than not, Parker, he's beat Trey Gomillion. He certainly has. I remember, you weren't on the episode of Raider Sports Podcast, but if I can put a closing thought on that. Sure. Raider, uh, Noah and I, Noah Kendig, of course, great guy. He's with us. He's down at the bottom of the arena. But Noah and I were talking about this game against Cleveland State if they hypothetically played each other because they hadn't played Oakland yet. And I said, basili has got to be better than Deontay Johnson, obviously. Holden's got to be better than Patton. But the X factor is can Trey Calvin outplay Trey Gamillion? So far tonight, the answer is a bold capital letter all caps. Yes, he can. He absolutely can. Wright State 43, Cleveland State 26, 17, 19 to go in the game. Vasily with 16 points. Calvin with 11 points. Holden with four. Braun with four. Finky with five. And this is surprising, Shay. Tanner Holden has not made a shot. And if Cleveland State's goal to come in tonight was to shut down Tanner Holden, they've done that. Yeah, absolutely. Tanner Holden, I mean, this Wright State Big Three is so deep, so good. They've really done a nice job of, you know, when one guy's having an off night, another guy steps up. But Parker, like, I mean, they're holding this team to 30% shooting. This is a team that averages 75 points a game this year. The defense in the second half of the Oakland game and in the half plus three minutes of this game, they're playing championship-level defense. Well, we talked about it every day since Thursday. If the Wright State second-half team against Oakland comes out on Monday night in Indianapolis, they have. they're going to be tough to beat, and that team has shown up here tonight. If, Park, they, if they continue to play like this and win this game, I have no doubt in my mind that they have a very, very good shot at winning it all tomorrow night. And, Parker, they, they mentioned, I mean, Scott Nagy's mentioned Hodge off the inbound pass, open three, in and out. Gamillion has a tip from behind yeah. by Basili. But... Holding up ahead, can't finish. Once a foul, no call. But, I mean, since Scott Nagy became the head coach of the Raiders, Patton lays it in, I think, and one. Yeah, they're going to call a foul on Grandpa Silly right there. Yeah, so that's a big score by Torrey Patton. But since Scott Nagy got this job, he's prided himself on a defense, as a defensive coach, Parker. He's had stars that can score the basketball. He's had Grant Benzinger. He's had Loudon Love. He's had Tanner Holden. He's had Bill Wampler. He's had Cole Gentry. He has Trey Calvin and Grant Basile. But at the end of the day, Scott Nagy's a defensive-minded coach. And right now, when everything's on the line and they're playing for a championship, they're playing defensive-minded basketball, and it's working for them. Absolutely. They work. Just like everybody says, it may be a cliche, but it's true, folks. Defense wins championships. Offense, offense sells tickets. Offense wins games. But defense, at the end of the day, wins it all. Yeah, it absolutely does. Torrey Patton at the free throw line here. Raiders by 20. Excuse me. 
And nothing going 17. right for nothing going right for the Vikings. Patton left that free throw short. Norris. Good trap here. Norris has got to get rid of it. Great defense by Hodge. And gets it to Finky. What's the call? A 10-second violation. Great defense there by Cleveland State. Yeah, and that full-court press has, has done wonders for Cleveland State. Right State can't find a way to beat it. It's really kept a minute, Parker. If it wasn't for the 12 turnovers by the Raiders tonight, a lot becoming because of that full-court press. I mean, they're already down 15. I think we could already be talking about Wright State maybe running away with this one if it wasn't for the effectiveness of the press. Yeah, absolutely. The press has been the, Ra the Raiders' kryptonite. Well, and the Raiders know far too well that a 15-point lead in the Horizon League tournament means absolutely nothing. Absolutely. Parker inbounds it to Marambo. Marambo guarded by Braun, hands off to Demoy Hodge. Hodge lost it momentarily, got it back. Now Parker works his way right, guarded by the larger Basili. Parker, 10 to shoot, works left. Marambo guarded at the left elbow by Braun. Marambo looking for a backdoor cut from Hodge, who lays it in. That's a nice play. Great find by Marambo, an even better bucket by Hodge. And the Vikings pull back within 13. Here's Keaton Norris. Raiders are going to get a, get across the midway stripe this time. Basili with it now. Basili drives on Parker, holding with it. Raiders lead it by 13, but you do not want this to get down to 7 or 8 or Cleveland State smells blood in the water. Here's Braun now. Braun, cross court, Norris. 8 to shoot. Here's Holden. Holden drives. Norris, top of the key. Back out to Finky. Finky down low to Braun. Braun now, spins, and it's a shot clock violation. And I don't think anyone on the Raiders there knew how little time they had left to shoot. That's going to be another sloppy turnover by the Raiders. 43-30, 16 to go. Again, we appreciate you hanging out with us on your Monday evening. Parker Testa, Shea Neal, live. We hope, and, we, and we hope we'll get to hang out with you tomorrow night as well. Absolutely. Parker Testa, Shea Neal, live from the Indiana State Fairgrounds at the Farmers Coliseum here in Indianapolis. Marambo. Oh. Don't. You go ahead, Shay. My we, bad. No, it's good. We went the full game without doing that. So, you know, <laughs> usually we screw up before then. So, tough drive and one. Oh, what a play there by Parker. That was, a, that was a tough shot. He made it look easy. Gets around the defender, lays it up and in, and now they're going to go to the line for the and one opportunity. When we come back, we pause our score. Wright State 43 and Cleveland State 32. And we're back at the Indiana Farmers Coliseum here in Indianapolis, Indiana for the Horizon League semifinals. I'm Parker Testa, joined here by Shea Neal as we're going to see Parker go to the free throw line for Cleveland State, and he hits the shot. Again, made a great layup, plus the foul before the break. And now the full court press is on for Cleveland State. Wright State struggling with it. Yeah, and obviously it's not time to panic yet, but the Raiders came out with seven points quickly in the second half. The Vikings have responded with seven points of their own. We're right back to a ten-point game. Raiders need to find a response here. Hodge with the steal. And a block is called against Holden. And the basket's going to count. Big finish and transition by Hodge. And the Vikings can cut it down to seven. 15, 30 to go. Wright State 43, Cleveland State 35. Vasily leads all scores with 16 points. Six for 11 from the field, two for four from beyond the arc, two for three from the free throw line, throw in seven rebounds. What a day for Grant. Hodge can't hit the free throw. Raiders with an eight point lead. And here comes that press once again. This is get, this has become, you know, it's given Wright State fits. They need to fi figure out a way to get around it. That's a foul on Hodge. That'll be Hodge's second. I don't know why, going back to the first half, I don't know why Dennis Gates stopped doing it. It worked for a while, got Cleveland State back within three, and then they pulled back, and Wright State built it back up to 12. And I, I mean, I just think if Cleveland State wants to win, they just got to do this press full time. Yeah, absolutely. He inbound is Norris. Norris with it. Here comes Hodge. Screen by Holden. Over to Calvin. Calvin back to Norris on the right wing. Calvin left wing. Drives. Calvin back nice to pass. Norris. Norris for three. Foul. Got it and the foul! Oh, let's go! 
Gomillion. Oh, no, I'm sorry. That's Parker. I thought it was Gomillion's fourth. That's on Parker, but that's a chance for a four-point play. A great find by Calvin and an enormous shot by the freshman Keaton Norris. Keaton Norris isn't a very big guy. Shay, I'm, ab I'm about five foot ten, and we're about the same height, but he, he can really shoot it. Parker, he didn't have a ton of time to get that shot up, and he had just enough time to get it over the arm of Parker. He and, took a hit, and he but hits he delivers. The, he hits the free throw, making a four-point play, Raiders by 12. That's a huge possession for the Wright State Raiders. Maybe this will give the Raiders the momentum they needed for a few minutes. Yeah, well, Man, and that's going to get the roll. And I mean, if you heal Hills taking pull-up jumpers from the elbow, I mean, I think I'd take that if I'm Scott Nagy. Raiders, I think, have figured out a way to beat this press. They're just moving it real quick. Norris. And that does work against the press, but you just have to be worried about playing a little too quick and losing the ball. Yeah, take care of the basketball. Nice, nice speed to Holden, and it's tipped away by Hodge. Hodge has been great tonight at not fouling but getting a hand on that ball. And hes they don't call him the Defensive Player of the Year for a reason, folks. And that's well, they do call him Defensive Player of the Year for a reason. <laughs> Holden. In ba inbounds. We've done it twice Finky, in three Finky minutes. for three. No. Rebound goes to Marambo. And Hink Finky's not as consistent from the top of the key as he is from the corners, but like the aggressiveness, like the shot selection from Tim, they might need him to hit one or two more of those if they're going to win tonight. Another tough finish by Hill. Hill gets it done. So Cle Cleveland State's starting to pick it up on offense. They're back within eight once again with 14 to go. This press, Shea, this right state struggled with it. Here comes Norris. Finky back to Norris. Calvin at the top of the key. The Raiders reset. Norris. Raiders need another score here. Try and stop the bleeding. Cal Calvin. Calvin will work around. Holden. Holden drives. That's Layup a foul. is fouled. Before the shot, that'll be on. That'll be on Marambo, I believe. Raiders not in the bonus just yet. We're going to have an inbound play. That foul was indeed on Marambo. Torrey Patton checks back in for Parker. Raiders have out-rebounded the Vikings tonight, 25-18. They've also hit seven more three-pointers, which has helped them hold off Cleveland State for a majority of the night. Holden, Finky, over to Norris. Norris, 14 to shoot. Finky, pass to nice Norris. Pass. Norris for three. Can he hit again? No. The rebound goes to the Vikings. Calvin had a shot at that rebound. Could not pull it through. Woodrich on the other end. Hill now, 13-25 to go. Vikings have it down to eight. Can the Raiders get a stop here? Hill, he's been the offense for the last minute or two. Woodridge, tough shot, and it's off. Rebound to Silly. And look at Holden running ahead. Holden the stuff. He beat Hill back the other end, and he slams it down. It's just a heads-up play by Tanner Holden. Caught the defense lacking. You know, when you're younger, Parker, they say that's cherry-picking, but cherry-picking might win games like this. You know, great job by Holden there. Caught the defense lacking. Gets all the way back to the other end. Nice pass by the Raiders. Finds Holden, though, in open space for the slam. Patton has it blocked by Basili, but Basili caught in the air there, and Marambo will go to the free-throw line. That'll be Grant's first. And there they show it again on the Jumbotron. Just a heads up, high IQ play by Tanner Holden. Yeah, and that's a, that's a great pass right there as well. And uh, an even better. You know, and a little shove there from Des Moines Hodge after that dunk. Yeah, Hodge shoved him in the back right there. But Holden slams it at home. But what you're not going to see, because obviously you can't see unless you're watching it on the television right now, but. Uh, what a pass from Grant Pazzilli. The full length of the floor finds the open holding for the slam. Looking like, you know, Kevin Love showing Cleveland State pride here tonight. Cleveland's own Kevin Love. Marambo misses them both. Pazzilli cleans it up. Raiders by 10, 12.43 to go. If the, if the Raiders can keep it around 10, 12 points, Parker, they're in a really good spot. This Cleveland State team can score, but I don't know if they can outscore the Raiders when they're down by that much. Holding, gets it to Norris. Norris, step side, jumper. And that one's no good. Rebound, Patton, and it's going to be a foul on foul. Cleveland State. Underneath, yeah, I think that's Marambo's third. Basili hit the deck. Really late call there. Basili was almost getting himself up when they called it. 
but that is going to be on Marambo, his third. Labor Majak will check in for Marambo, the big seven foot two center. And Parker uh, Majak is known for that steal he got in triple overtime last year to beat Purdue Fort Wayne. Still not out of the realm of possibility that that rematch could be the Horizon League Championship. Finky a three, not a little too strong there. Rebound Woodrich. And Majak, seven foot two, 230 pound sophomore from Sudan. Went to Hamilton Southeastern High School just up the road from here. Hodge straight on three. Got it. And where would Cleveland State be without the Moy Hodge here tonight? He's pulled the Vikings back within seven with 12 minutes to go in the game. Here's Calvin. He's also done an outstanding job on Tanner Holden defensively. Holden drives. Triple team comes. He lost the basketball. Patton has it now and in the hands of Woodridge. 11.45 to go. Vikings with the basketball down by five, seven, excuse me. Fince, Finchner finding Woodridge. No. Majak on the glass. Left it short. Fight for the rebound. Holding comes away with it. Raiders need a bucket here in a big way. Finky down the court. Layup. Foul. foul. And Finky will go to the free throw line as Hodge picks up his third. That'll bring us to our under 12 media timeout, folks. We'll pause. Our score, we Red State. One. Yeah, it was. Red State 49 and Cleveland State 42. We'll be right back. Stay with us. WWSC 106.9 FM. You're listening to Wright State Raider basketball on your home for Raider sports. WWSU 106.9 FM. 49-42, Wright State leads with 11.33 to go in this game here. Horizon League semifinals from Indiana Farmers Coliseum in Indianapolis. I'm Parker Testa, joined here by Shay Neal. Raiders have come out. They came out strong in the first half. They've kept, but Cleveland State just can't seem to go away. No, absolutely not. And I mean, at halftime, we mentioned, you know, they're halfway there. They've played very well for most of this game, but this Cleveland State team, Parker, will not die until that final buzzer goes. Wright State's going to have to play a complete game to beat this Viking team. They haven't been able to do it in the first two games. They're 11 minutes away from doing it here. Let's see if they can finish the job. Finky hits the first free throw. Second free throw coming up for Tim. Free throw, good. Tim Finky hits a pair at the line. And I'll tell you what, Parker, we knew Finky's a great defender. He's been great on Torrey Patton tonight. Patton only with four points on two of nine shooting. But Finky has a big seven points tonight offensively. He has He's only hit one three. He's only hit two shots. But it seems like he's getting more confidence on offense, and it's good to see. 51-42 with 11.33 to play. Five on the floor for the Raiders is Grant Basile, Tim Finky. Trey, Trey Calvin, Tanner Holden, and A.J. Braun. Gamillion and Hodge both with three fouls. They're both in the game. Patton with two. Couple big names for Cleveland State. Not in foul trouble, but, you know, just something to keep your eye on. For the Raiders, Calvin has three. Holden has two. Raiders have 15 turnovers tonight. That's maybe the, the big thing keeping Cleveland State in this game, but we know far too well, Parker, that Cleveland State's the best in the conference at forcing mistakes from the other team. Grant Basile is not on the floor right now, but he is one rebound away. Hodge, another one. Left that one short. Fight for the rebound. Tipped up in the air. And a jump ball. Possession goes to Cleveland State. Great hustle by Keaton Norris, though. Going up against, I believe, the Finston there on that play. And Finston obviously has about four or five inches there on Keaton. So great job by Keaton forcing them to reset, allowing the Raider defense to get... Refreshed, and it looked like Grant got about a 30-second sip of Gatorade, and he's right back out there. Grant Pacilli, one rebound away from a double-double. It won't be that time. Braun grabs it there, and here's Calvin with it now. Raiders looking to go up by double digits again. They lead by nine with 11 minutes to play. Calvin, hands off. Finky fakes a three. Pacilli at the top of the key. Pacilli drives on the right wing. Finky. Nice move by left. Tim Finky. Nice fake. Finky pivots, shot from the mid-range. No, rebound goes to Finston. I like the aggressiveness by Finky. He's got one of the best shot fakes in the Horizon League. I just wish he'd you know, be a little more decisive off the pump fake. Gamillion driving, lay it up. No, rebound. Finky and Gamillion hit the deck. And a jump ball will give the ball to Wright State. That's just two guys playing for a championship, Parker. A lot of heart on that play. Looks like a wide receiver and a cornerback fighting for a 
50 jump ball. 50 ball right there. Yeah, and it was a 50-50 ball, and Gomillion and Finky looking like WWE superstars there, hitting him with the Randy Orton. Using the floor here at the Farmers Coliseum. There's a wrestling ring here. And those are two guys, Parker, that have great hair and play really good defensively. Yeah. And you could tell they both wanted that ball more than they wanted to keep living. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Jim Finky to inbound here, and he does to Calvin. Full court press will back off here for Cleveland State. Ten and a half to go. Raiders with the ball up by nine. Cal Raiders have had about a seven-plus point lead the majority of the night. Norris with it. Back to Calvin. Calvin will hand it to Norris on the right wing. Norris back to Calvin. Vikings trying to defend the wings. Now Calvin three for it. Calvin. No. Rebound high. Calvin hit the deck. Maybe trying to draw a foul on the other end. Norris goes up. Great defense That's by good. Norris. That's really good defense by Norris. And here comes Calvin. Raiders with Calvin. numbers. Calvin to Basile who lays it in. And Keaton Norris with one of the best plays you won't talk about. May have hurt his arm on that play, Parker. He's holding that arm. Well, it all started for the, the defense on the shot on the previous possession by Norris that started that fast break allowed Basili to score. And that's something to keep your eye on, Parker. I think he hurt his arm on that play. They're about to get holding in for him. He's grabbing that elbow. Might have gotten hit on the way up. No, it'll be A.J. Braun the sub out. So Norris stays in the game. We'll see. I've seen him grab that arm about three times so since that I. possession. It looks like he's going to fight through it, though, and keep playing. You got a, a max of, you know, two or three games left this season. I don't know why you wouldn't he, fight through it. And a foul is, oh, no, they're going to say he stepped out of bounds. I was going to say, you can't call that a foul. But back-to-back -back possessions, Parker. Keaton Norris unleashing his inner Des Moines Hodge. Yeah, he almost poked one away right there. but He uh, did poke it away. He just stepped on the baseline. So this is Finston. Guarded by Finky. Finston goes right at Wright State's best defender. Fadeaway jumper is good. What a shot. Yeah, another, and you can't play much better defense than that. Yeah, I was about to say that. Nothing nothing you can do right there if you're the defender. Just a great shot attempt. Tough Here. week for Finky. He's played elite defense and has had Kane and Hodge and some of these guys just hit really tough shots. Yeah, Norris with it now. Back to Holden at the top of the key. Norris, left wing, inside to Finky. Man. That one spoked away. Stolen by Hodge. Good idea. I think Majak got a piece of that. Hodge going coast to coast lays it in and that's just the speed of Des Moines Hodge Vikings back within seven they will not go quietly into this Indianapolis night Raiders 53 Vikings 46 850 to go Norris top of the key good Keaton Norris delivers again you think his arm's hurting now, Shay? No, I think he's all right on that one. <laughs> Raiders back up 10, and that's the second time the Raiders have needed a bucket, and Norris has drilled a triple. Absolutely. Here's Finston driving. Offensive, Offensive foul. foul. Nagy and Beret love it on the bench. Raiders have seized all the momentum here over the last minute and a half. And Parker, how about Keaton Norris? Ten points tonight, three of five shooting, three of four from beyond the arc, two assists, and that enormous defensive play off the, off the turnover. Absolutely. And it all stemmed from that defensive play by Keaton Norris a couple possessions ago. Looked like an easy layup for the Vikings. Norris was able to get a hand on it. It turned into a bucket for the Raiders. And ever since then, Wright State has a 10-point lead, and Keaton Norris has been huge tonight off the bench. It was Wellage against Oakland. Tonight, Parker, it's Keaton Norris. Norris with 10 points, and here he is again, Basili. Basili needs to go right at Masam yeah, Marambo right here. He does, and it looks like he's going to do that. Turnaround jumper for Grant. Oh! It's good. Grant Basili, don't do it to him, big man. It's Grant's world, and we're all just living in it. Right, State fans on their feet. They're loving this performance that the Raiders have given, and but there's a foul. Nagy cannot believe it, neither can Holden. Holden thought he got that one clean, and that's going to be Holden's third. That brings us to the under-eight timeout here at the Indiana Farmers Coliseum. Parker, Mars. you know what this says about Cleveland State? Right, State's played a nearly flawless game, and we still feel really good about Cleveland State's chances to make this close down the stretch. Absolutely, and for that final stretch, Stay with us as we pause. Wright State 58 and Cleveland State 46. And we are back from the Indiana Farmers Coliseum. Our score, Wright State 58, Cleveland State 46. 
7.58 to go in the game. I'm Parker Tessa, joined here by Shea Neal. Shea, you said you have a lot to say. Take it away. I do, and I think, I mean, Wright State, there, uh, there's only so much you can say about how well Wright State's played tonight, but yeah. this Cleveland State team will not die until that final whistle goes off, but I just wanted to take a minute and say what an honor, what a, tr what a treat it is to be able to go to this tournament every year. Yeah. Of course, the Farmers Coliseum does it right, uh, and it's always fun to make the trip out here, stay in a hotel, have some fun. Uh, of course, if Wright State pulls it out tonight, I'm sure we'll be having some fun, but Parker it's always a treat to end the Horizon League basketball season in the heart of college basketball country. Couldn't think of a better place than Indianapolis. Yeah, absolutely. Indianapolis has done a very good job of hosting events such as this one. They do the Big Ten tournament as well. Hosted Super Bowls. Hosted the entire tur NCAA tournament last year. So. Nice feed to Deontay Johnson, but a little too strong there. Calvin cleans it up. Yeah. That's a big stop by the Raiders. Great city overall is Indianapolis for a tournament like this one. is. And you, and you would know you grew up 20 minutes down the road. I did. And, now, if, and if you've lived here for 20 years and still think it's good, it must be a good city. It absolutely is. <laughs> Calvin gets fouled, bringing it up there, and he'll go to the free throw line. And Parker, this is big. Obviously, 12-point lead down the stretch. You're going to need to hit some free throws. And for the last eight minutes of this game, Wright State's going to be in the bonus. And, we'll and that's see. Gomillion's fourth, I believe. Yeah, Gomillion will check out. Back in is Woodridge. We'll see who that foul was on. I believe it was Gomillion's fourth, though. Our uh, thing hasn't updated yet. And Calvin hits the first of a one and one. Yeah, that was Gomillion's fourth, by the way. Wright State's biggest lead of the night tonight is 17. They lead at 59-46 right now. Wright State has not trailed in this game, Shay. They have led 30 to 40. They have led this game for 30 minutes. Yeah, they. I think they were up four nothing early on, and I mean, ever since then, it's. For the most part, been Raiders in control, but we know how good this Cleveland State team is, and it's Raiders in control until the clock hits zero. Finston gets fouled there, bringing it up on the baseline. And it's going to be on Tanner Holden. For Tanner Holden, that will be his third foul, I believe. And Wright State with a 14-point lead. 7.32 to go, 60-46, Raiders lead. That's the fourth on Keaton Norris, and Parker, that's that's a pretty big development. Keaton Norris has been the best player off the bench tonight for the Raiders. Scott Nagy knows it, too, and he's going to make sure Keaton does not get put in danger of that fifth foul until he absolutely has to. Absolutely. And we're going to see a winner one here. We're going to see a lot of Andrew Wellage over the next couple minutes, maybe a little bit of A.J. Braun as well, but when you hit about four minutes to go, I think Scott Nagy's just going to say, well, you know, let's go for it and put Keaton back in there. So for Jason Woodridge, he hits his first free throw of a one-on-one -on -one and second attempt coming up. Vikings have only made nine of their 14 free throws tonight. Vi uh, Raiders have made 11 of 13. Second free throw for Woodridge is good, and then Raiders back to a 12-point lead. Parker, if the Raiders keep this up over the last eight minutes of this game, they would pass the 2016 Raiders. Because that's going to be a foul on Hodge. That's his fourth. Basili takes the contact. And now two big pieces in this game, Parker, have four fouls. Keaton Norris for the Raiders and, a, and the all-defensive player of the year, all-league first team, Demoy Hodge for Cleveland State. Oakland fell apart. Wayne Kane fouled out. Parker, we may see something similar if Hodge has to leave early. Yeah, absolutely. So for Hodge, again, that's his fourth foul. And Grant Pasilli at the free throw line. Again, right state in the bonus for the remainder of the game. Pasilli free throw is no good. Only the third missed free throw of the night by Wright State. Obviously don't want to make a habit of that in the final seven minutes of a tournament game. Vasily's second free throw. Got the roll. Gets oh. a re rattles around but falls. Almost over adjusted, almost left that one short, but he did get the friendly bounce. They're leaving Hodge out there with four fouls, Parker, so. Dennis Gates likes to live dangerously. All oh, the season on the line, here we go. Hodge with it now. Step, Step back. Hodge, nice defense by Calvin there. They get it out to Woodridge, guarded by Wellage. Tw Ten to shoot, Raiders up 13. Woodridge, tough, fading three. No good, and he really didn't have a chance on that one. That's a poor shot. Great defense by Wright State on that possession. Here comes Tanner Holden with it now. And this, is just, and this is just the kind of guy that Demoy Hodge is. Has four fouls in one of the biggest games of his life, and he's still poking, going for steals. He's playing life in the fast lane, Parker, and I love it. Basili, guarded by Johnson with it. 
Johnson. Go right at him, Grant. Grant backing him down. Nice side. Speed. Calvin, no. Rebound, Finstoon. Calvin just a little bit too much mustard on that one as Holden tips it out of bounds. It will stay with Cleveland State, but denying the ball from Torrey Patton. And still six minutes to make a difference here for Torrey Patton, but Parker, for 34 minutes, Wright State has taken Torrey Patton out of this game. Uh, it's not over by any means, folks. We sat in the... the 8-0 runs happen in two minutes all the time. We, we could be talking about a five-point game with four to go. Yeah, we sat in the radio booth at the Nutter Center with, uh, with about this time stamp just last year. Grant able to tip that one out of bounds from Deontay Johnson. We sat in the in the radio booth with about this timestamp, Shay. In that quarterfinal game, Wright State was up 24. We thought it was over. Thought we were headed. It to was Indian not. Thought we were headed to Indianapolis. Let's not say what happened at the end of that game. And uh, the good vibes only. This team's six minutes away from going to the Horizon League Championship. And we'll just say uh, they did not make it. There. They did not. Milwaukee played very well that night. They did. DeAndre Golston still gives me nightmares. Golston and Lucas are in my dreams until the day I die. <laughs> Pull-up jumper left short. Patton gets the offensive rebound. They need this guy to get going, but Finky blocked him, and he double dribbled. That's a turnover. Well, one thing that Patton didn't see right there is he had Yahil Hill wide open from the perimeter. He didn't see him. Double dribbled Raider basketball. Cleveland State's season on the ropes. Patton has been a non-factor. Yeah. Hodge has four fouls. Here comes Trey Calvin with it. The Raiders playing the clock game right now. Smart move by Coach Nagy. Basile gets it. Poked away by Holden, but he's kept alive. Nice recovery. Holden there Holden boxed out drives, Finston. And he lays it in. And Holden boxed out Finston there to make sure he got that ball back. Drives and finishes like Tanner Holden always does. Raiders up 15, and the crowd starting to feel what's on the line here in Indianapolis. Raider fans on their feet here at the Farmers Coliseum. Johnson works his way right. Patton fakes the three. Patton drives. Patton is fouled by Holden, and I believe that'll be Tanner's fourth. And it will be the fourth on Tanner. And we're going to have... Oh, I'm sorry, they're going to call that on Basilian. and that's his second. That's big for the Raiders, actually. Yeah. You don't want Holden to pick up his fourth. Absolutely not. So Torrey Patton goes to the free throw line here. Patton is 0 for 1 at the stripe tonight. He's only made two of his combined 10 shots. That one, just not Torrey Patton's night. That one went around the rim three times, Parker. It is not Torrey Patton's night. There's a coating on that rim for Torrey Patton tonight. Now here is Trey Calvin. Screen set by Grant Basile. Calvin now, drives. Parker, I think we'll see Wright State start to play the clock game a little bit here. Yeah. You still want to take good shots, but you don't want to take good shots in the first eight seconds of the shot clock here. Finky. With it now, guarded by Torrey Patton. Finky, nice Finky. screen. Step back. And Gotta put one up and they throw it away. Grant threw it right to Marambo right there. And, and you see, you can burn clock, but you still gotta end it with a good shot, not a turnover. Woodridge with it now. Woodridge gets it down low to Marambo. Marambo spins, gets it to Finstoon. Finstoon lays it up. No rebound. That's this gonna be a foul underneath, I believe, on Marambo. Now Parker. We'll see what the call is there. That's gonna be on. They're going to call it on Tanner. Nah, it's going to be on Basile again. It's going to be again. on Grant again. That's his third. But well, Parker, what I'm curious there, Finston's going to go to the line, but Rombo had the ball in the post, backing down Trey Calvin. Why didn't he go up with it? He's 305 pounds. I, it beats me, man. I, Calvin's a really talented player, Parker, but Calvin's about a buck seventy-five. Yeah. <laughs> on a good day, <laughs> he might be a bu he might be the buck sixty that I am on most days. <laughs> First free throw from Finston, no good. Parker, the Vikings are killing themselves at the free throw line tonight, shooting fifty-nine percent, and that's. I mean, it's not the reason why they're down 14, Parker, but it's the reason why they're not down eight. <laughs> well, 11 for 18 for Cleveland State, 12 for 15 for Wright State. That's the difference for you folks right now. And here is Keaton Norris with it now. Norris guarded by Hill. 4.25 right. to go. Raiders with a 14-point lead. They can taste the horizon title. Calvin Jumper, no. Rebound. It is going to be fouled. Foul underneath. They have a... Green into the game now, Chris Green. They're going to call it on you, Hell Hill. That's going to send Calvin to the, or Basili to the line, excuse me. 
Parker, at this point, you hit your free throws. Obviously, there's a lot that can happen in four minutes, and this Cleveland State team is the last I'd count out. But you hit your free throws, and you don't make stupid fouls, you're in a really good spot to be four minutes away from the Horizon League Championship. Certainly. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to have a timeout here, folks. We'll step away very briefly. Wright State can taste the title fight. We'll see if they punch their ticket when we come back. Choice. Back here at the Indiana Farmers Coliseum. 4.22 to go in the game. Wright State 63, Cleveland State 49. I'm Parker Testa, joined here by Shay Neal to my left. And we're just having some fun here, folks. It's Wright been a blast. State's having some fun. Wright State's having some fun. And we're going to see Trey Calvin go to the free throw line here out of the timeout. Four minutes to go. Not over by any means, but I tried to call my shot in the pregame show and say it's the Wright State Redemption Tour. And Parker, for 36 minutes, they have played Cleveland State. They've out-Cleveland State at Cleveland State. Yeah. They've played great defense. They've taken advantage of opportunities better than the Vikings have. They've given, uh, given Cleveland State a taste of their own medicine, no doubt about it. Second free throw for Calvin is good, so he hits both at the line. Wright State with their second li biggest lead of the game, and that's a sloppy pass and a turnover. Yeah, Hill Hill just lets it go right through his hands, and that tells you, and that shows you right there, Parker, what a great coach Dennis Gates is. I'm sure that's just eating Yeah Hill Hill up right now. And the first thing Dennis Gates does, slap him, you know, uh, tap him on the back, say, "Hey, man, shake it off." This isn't all on you. Right. Dennis Gates is a heck of a coach, man. Very right. happy with Scott Nagy at Wright State. And, but if we didn't have Scott Nagy, Dennis Gates would be at the top of my list. And one thing I respect about Coach Gates, he's old school. He still wears the suit for every single game. You respect it. I respect that. Coach Nagy just in the quarter zip. Hey, quarter zips are very nice. I love quarter, I wear quarter zips. zips all the time. I love quarter zips as well, but... There's nothing like the classic suit. And now, Parker, I am a big fan of first impressions. I think that, you know, you only get one chance to make a first impression. I think Dennis Gates feels that way, too. And he's like, you know, it doesn't take a ton of effort to try and be dressed nice for a big event. And what's a bigger event than the Horizon League Tournament? Calvin, cross court, nice pass to Basile. Foul, then he'll go to the line. Parker Wright State's got all the energy in the building right now. And this fan base, this team, this city can taste redemption trying to go back to their first Horizon League championship since 2019. Eliminated in the semis by UIC. Eliminated in the quarters by Milwaukee. Can Wright State finally get back to the title fight for the Horizon League crown? The way they've played tonight, they've put themselves in a great position. Certainly have. They have had a... Gamillion just fouled out, by the way. Excellent. Yeah, so Gamillion, his day's done. One of the better players, one of the best defenders in the conference is out. One of the... For Cleveland State. And again, Dennis Gates, just all class, has his arm around him on the sideline. The senior, of course, yeah. To tell him what, what, you know, tell him it's going to be all right. Give him some words of encouragement. Absolutely. Vasily hits his first free throw. Second one is up and good as well. And Parker, I mean, Trey Gamillion, as that's a great pass to Finston. Wow. That's a great pass, and Cleveland State needed a bucket there, 67-51. Calvin shakes the defenders, gets it to Norris. But just a piece about Trey Gomillion, Parker. I mean, this Cleveland State team was one of the worst in the league when Trey Gomillion got here, and now they're, you know, Horizon League champs and the one seed in the next year after that. I, I think Trey Gomillion's a pretty safe what bet. What a play That's by Grandpa Silly. That's beautiful. Spins around. Takes the shot off of his wrist. And it might be the dagger in the heart of Cleveland State. We've reached another break, folks, but we will keep it yeah, here. Yeah, we will. And Trey Gomillion, but what I was trying to say, yeah. Cleveland State, one of the worst in the conference when he gets here. When he leaves, they're champs. He's two-time all-defensive team, two-time all-league team, and they're, you know, they're champs, and they're back with the one seed. One of the best eras of Cleveland State basketball in their history. I don't know enough about Cleveland State basketball to say this is a lock, but I like Trey Gomillion's chances to be a Hall of Famer at Cleveland State someday. Yeah, I mean, why not? Uh, the guy's done all you... All, and I think there's another guy on this roster that'll be there too, Torrey Patton. Yeah, I mean, both of these guys have done really everything that they're, they're they coaches have the asked them for. They've won a championship. They're the one seed going into this tournament, like you said. And they really, they took... 
It's like Joe Burrow with the Bengals, Parker. They went from worst to first, and that's really hard to do in any sport. I don't care if it's the NFL going from the number one overall pick to the Super Bowl or if it's the Horizon League going from, you know, being the worst team in the Horizon League and, you know, not even making the tournament sometimes to being Horizon League champions and being not just respected but feared by a lot of teams in this conference. Well, this is a team that's similar to, you know, Purdue-Fort Wayne now where they come into the conference last year as somewhat of an unknown. They have a, you know, they have an okay year, not nothing great. But then they come into this tournament and they're, you know, the second-ranked team. And they're going to play uh, NKU after the conclusion of this game tonight, but... What what a game and what a performance for or what a turnaround for Cleveland State and what a performance by Wright State here tonight. Not a lot of time for the Vikings here. It's Patton, it's Hodge, it's Finston, it's Parker, and it's fresh into the game. Number zero, Jack. Finston up strong, can't finish, cleans up his mess, a third try, a fourth try, and finally draws a foul. Parker, Finston's been outstanding off the bench. He has, you know, and he just knocked in that bucket. That's his third, that's his uh, fifth bucket. Well, he's going to get free throws. The bucket didn't count. Oh, uh, that's that's my mistake. But um, he has 11 points, four for six from the field. and uh, Eight rebounds now. Three for four from the free throw line, and again, eight rebounds. As he hits the first free throw, make it 12 points for Finston. And this is the worst thing you can do if you're right state down the stretch. You cannot give Cleveland State a chance to score points with no time coming off the clock. And one thing that you know I've been impressed with Wright State's defense tonight is holding Torrey Patton to a minimum. Two for nine from the field, 0 for two from three, 0 for two from the free throw line. Just hasn't been uh, the night that we're used to seeing from Torrey Patton. And Scott Nagy, he's up by 17. Good look for Hodge, he can't hit it. And Parker, that really feels like a shot Cleveland State had to have. Yeah, Scott Nagy, again, they're up by 17, but he's still not satisfied. Still screaming at his guys. Basile thought about a three. Nah, burn some clock here. Good, good decision by Grant. You're up 17. Just keep milking this clock and punch your ticket to tomorrow night. Norris and Holden go back and forth at the top of the key, and there's a foul. It's gonna be called on Nathaniel Jack. Off uh, away for the ball will be fouled on Tanner Holden. For Jack, that's his first foul. He's been subbing in and out of the game very briefly all night. Tanner Holden subs in, or excuse me, he'll go to the free throw line. Again, thank you folks for hanging out with us tonight on this Monday on WWC 106.9 FM. Parker Testa, Shea Neal to my left. Joining you from the Indiana Farmers Coliseum in Indianapolis. Parker, the la what we've seen in the last three halves of Raider basketball, they've got to be going into tomorrow night feeling really, really good about their chances to win it all. Absolutely. We've ticked under three minutes to go. 2.49. To we, spent, we spent four months wondering where this Wright State team was. Consistency issues. You know, losing a lot of winnable games. But Parker, when this team needed to show up, they showed up. And that's all that you can ask for if you're Scott Nagy. Raiders with the basketball. Two and a half minutes to go. They lead it 71-54. Full court press back on. Here's Basile. They find him down low. Basile, floater. Good, but he traveled. Though. The shot will count. And a deep court pass. Norris able to get a hand on it, but a three is good. And Wright State a little lackadaisical there, Parker. It's a 14-point game, and Nagy instantly calls timeout. And with Tanner Holden hitting those two free throws just a second ago, he joins the second player in this lineup. And that's Grant Basile with the double-double. Tanner Holden, 10 points, 10 rebounds. Grant Basile, 25 points, 10 rebounds. What a night for the Wright State Raiders. Absolutely. We have... 2.18 to go here at the Indiana Farmers Coliseum. Wright State leads by 14. We won't, be, we won't be calling the game tonight, but we will definitely be watching it from our hotel room. Make yeah. sure you find out who the Raiders could potentially be playing tomorrow night when the Northern Kentucky Norse go up against the Purdue Fort Wayne Mastodons. Now, Parker, I mean, Wright State went 2-0 and against Purdue Fort Wayne and 0-2 and against Northern Kentucky, so maybe Raider Nation would rather see the Dons, but... 
I, I think a Wright State NKU title fight sounds like something that all of us would welcome. I mean... That's what rivalries are all about. I mean, who's going to say no? And, and for those of you listening... Warwick and Faulkner versus Basile and Holden, I mean, that sounds about as good as it gets. For those of you listening, and people that may not understand Horizon League basketball, this NKU Wright State rivalry is... Big. Colts Patriots. Yeah. It's Red Sox Yankees. It's the best of the best. East, I mean, nobody in this conference, there's a lot of teams in this conference that dislike each other. Cleveland State and Wright State dislike each other. Wright State and Detroit Mercy dislike each other. Wright State and Northern Kentucky hate each other. Yeah, yeah. so it, it, it's as, as good as it gets as far as basketball rivalries go in this conference. And, and, and we're lucky enough, Parker, that they hate each other, and both schools have outstanding basketball teams. Absolutely, and outstanding head coaches, Scott Nagy at Wright State, Darren Horn, at NKU, both top quality programs. And Calvin goes right to the rim. Finding Holden. Is that the dagger for Tanner Holden? Raiders by 16 with under two to go. Dusting off an old line right there, Shea. I like it. Patton inside and one. Tory Patton. They're not going to go quietly. No, they will not. And that's something you got to respect about this team. They play hard for 40 minutes. Scott Nagy knows that. And Parker, if, if a 15-point comeback in two minutes is possible, it became just a hair more possible because Tanner Holden just fouled out. Yeah. So Tanner Holden's night is done. And, and what's, what's cr scary, Parker, is this was a below-average night for Tanner Holden, and the Raiders are up double digits on the one seed. If Tanner Holden comes out stronger tomorrow, I don't know if there's a team in this league that can beat this team. No, Tanner Holden as the second free throw is good there by Finstoon, but uh, Tanner Holden fouls out. His night's done, and Tanner will finish with 12 points off 3 for 10, shooting 10 rebounds. He had a double-double tonight. He did. Calvin just trying to dribble out some clock. Let's go under 100 seconds to go. And Calvin is fouled by Hodge, and that's going to be Hodge's fifth. And Hodge is done as well. He'll join Trey Gamillion on the bench. An eye for an eye, Parker. Holden says good night. Not far behind him is Des Moines Hodge. And let's throw it out there. Des Moines Hodge, what a year he had. First team all league. One of the best scorers in this conference. Horizon League Defensive Player of the Year. Parker, when I first got here, Des Moines Hodge was a solid backup guard on the bench. He leaves a true superstar in the Horizon League. What a career for Des Moines Hodge. Absolutely. Hodge leaves as one of the best defenders the league has ever seen. And Trey Calvin's first free throw, good. And if he hits this next one, I think it's that's the icing on the cake. I, I think it's a wrap, man. Without Hodge, I mean, with Patton struggling most of the night, I just don't see a, a way that Cleveland State gets back into this one. 75-60. Just over 90 seconds to go. Parker coast to coast. Layup good. That's a heck of a shot right there by Parker. I think it's just too little too he late went, though, went, Parker. He went right at Grandpa Silly right there and just hit the hit the shot. And well, nice play by Wellwich. Right called the timeout. Nowhere to go. There's no rush. There's no rush. Wright State gets the timeout off. 126 to go. They're up 75-62. And Parker, two very frustrating games this year for Wright State against Cleveland State. Tonight, the furthest thing from frustrating. Absolutely. It was a blast start to finish. Absolutely. Heck of a night. Pet band's going nuts. Rowdy in the house feeling good. We got the cheerleaders and the dance team here in Indianapolis. Yeah, and, and just, everyone's having a great time. And I just want to give a quick shout out. I had the pleasure of meeting the great Greg Regstraw down on the floor at halftime. Of course, he's uh, one of the, the vice president of the Indiana Sports Channel, covers high school football, is also the play-by-play -play voice of IEPUI basketball on ESPN Plus, and Greg couldn't have been a nicer individual to me, and knows uh, one of my great former high school teachers, Lance Scheib, so shout Absolutely. out shout out to Greg, and shout out to Coach Scheib for being such stand-up guys. So back in action here at the Farmers Coliseum, Calvin with it now. Calvin Basile slams it home! We'll oh. see you in the Horizon League Championship! Oh my, that was... Stomp down for Grant Pasilli as Woodridge lays it in. 
And as we wait for this one to click, tick down, the Raiders up 13 with a minute to go. The Sphinx fouled. Congratulations to former Wright State Raider Malachi Smith. He and the Chattanooga Mocs win the Southern Conference in overtime, 64-63. Malachi. Wow. Malachi ends up hitting the shot to win the game. Wow. Had 12 points. What a year for Malachi. Averaged 20.7 rebounds, three assists, just a sophomore. Started his career at Wright State and Parker. He's emerged as one of the country's best guards at Chattanooga. I think he hits the free throw. And forget this dang notebook. I don't need this notebook no more. Once a Raider, always a Raider, <laughs> man. I mean, he left, and that's unfortunate because I think he gets his own rebound. Fight for the basketball. They're going to call. Again. He's fouled again. Wow. Cleveland State season coming to an end. The guys huddle up there. We've ticked under 60 seconds to go, folks. Scott Nagy's still not happy, man. He's still got the he still got the scowl. The, he's still me mugging down there. Absolutely. Scott Nagy never never happy. And so Finky at the line for yet another free throw. Parker, I want you to live react to this while Finky takes free throws. This was the shot that won Chattanooga, the SoCon. Again, Malachi Smith, former Raider, is going dancing on that shot. Unbelievable. What a night. He hit that one from the sponsor logo right there. Breaking the hearts of Furman. Chattanooga's going dancing with Malachi. Once yeah. a Raider, always a Raider. Congrats, yeah. Mally. Absolutely. So 54 seconds to go. Woodridge goes right to the rim. and they Got it. Got and out. one. That was a late call. That was a late call. And Parker, this Cleveland State team just refuses for these seconds to tick down. No, they don't want them to. And I don't blame them. 80 to 66. With all the fouls down the stretch, your score prediction ended up being closer than mine. <laughs> I thought I was looking pretty good, my guy. Woodridge hit the free throw line. His, his one and one is good. Excuse me, that's just one shot. He hit the end one, so that was his... Well, we're foul shot there. So. Absolutely. And Raiders inbound it now. 50 seconds to go. They'll work their way up the court. Just burn some clock. Are the Cleveland State Vikings going to bow down? Not yet. And I respect that. Wellage will get the basketball. Wellage. Alley oop. Finky up strong. <laughs> this team's feeling themselves now, that Parker. That was nasty. This team's ready to fight for a championship. And then yet another foul will be called on the Raiders at the other end. Well, while we have, you know, a break in the action, and while we're in the city of Indianapolis, Parker, Indiana basketball legend Victor Oladipo makes his return to the NBA tonight, coming off the bench for the Miami Heat. You know, a lot of, you know, Indiana fans love or hate him. Obviously, his relationship with the Pacers did not end well, but I think a lot of Indianians... Indianians, Indianans. Hoosiers. Hoosiers, there you go. I think a lot of Hoosiers still have love in their heart for number four for what he did in Bloomington. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to see. Got me hooked on Indiana basketball, did Victor Oladipo. For sure. Parker at the free throw line. No good. Rebound Vasily. And now I think Cleveland State's just going to let it click. About a two-second difference between the shot and game clock. Right Fans State on, on their, their feet. feet. Fans on their feet. Right State is headed to the Horizon League Championship game tomorrow night. For the first time in three years, the Raiders are back to being one of the two teams left fighting for a spot in the NCAA tournament. They beat Cleveland State, and they get payback for the regular season. So it's not official yet. They just ran down the shot clock, so we have 2.7 left on buzz kill. the clock. So sorry to be a buzzkill. But, Arr. nonetheless, and there is a good final night. shot, and good night, Indianapolis, Wright State, Scott Nagy, Dennis Gates, shake hands at half court, and Wright State's headed to the Horizon League Championship game tomorrow night. The WSD Raider Post Game Show is coming up next, folks. Stay with us. It is the WSU Raider Post Game Show. Again, our final tonight, folks, from the Indiana Farmers Coliseum in Indianapolis. Wright State 82, Cleveland State 67. Parker Testa joined, the, joined alongside by Shay Neal. <laughs> uh, as he shows me uh, tweets that are 
pretty funny. Uh, but I wouldn't show you tweets that aren't funny. Uh, yes, you would. But our final tonight is Wright State 82 and Cleveland State 67. Basili led the way with 27 points. 10 for 15 from the field, 2 for 4 from 3, 5 for 7 from the free throw line. Calvin had 17. Holden with 12, Finky with 12, and Braun with 4 was the final 5 on the floor for Rice State. Shay, as we await the winner of Northern Kentucky and Purdue Fort Wayne coming up right after this one, just outstanding performance by Rice State. Tonight. Absolutely, absolutely. They they did what they had to do. They out Cleveland State, Cleveland State Parker. They played tough, gritty defense. They forced a tough night from Tory Patton. They got Trago Million and Des Moines Hodge to foul out. They did everything they needed to do. They checked all the boxes, and for that reason, they're going to be able to play for a trip to the NCAA tournament tomorrow. For Cleveland State, the number one seed goes down here on the opening night. And for once again, there will not be a defending champion in the Horizon League. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, Cleveland State never led this game. They never led this game. Wright State got out to a hot start quick. They were times where they kind of... Uh, step back a little bit and kind of took took it a little bit of a, a, a break or if you will uh, But they never got out of it. Um, the last feet the last field goal scored for Wright State was a dunk By Tim Finke with 36 set, seconds to go the largest lead for Wright State was 19 at the 253 remaining mark in the second half 71 to 52 largest run for Wright State was nine and final stats for Cleveland State leading scorer was Des Moines Hodge with 16. He fouled out, followed by Finstoon with 12. What a night for, for Brock Finstoon. Had played a great game. Trey Gomillion had six points. He fouled out. Mm -hmm. Marambo with two points. Hodge with 16. Parker with eight. Patton with four. What a great job by Wright State to hold Patton to a minimum tonight. Absolutely. And I mean, I think the big thing that really, you know, put this game in the Raiders' favor. Back at the Netter Center, Parker, we saw Wright State get out to a strong start, and we saw Cleveland State chip away, and Wright State started piling up turnovers, started piling up mistakes, and allowing this Cleveland State team to come back and win that game. What happened tonight was Cleveland State got it down to three. They played very, very well, got this back within a very tight game towards the end of that first half. And Parker, what did they? What did Wright State do? They went on another 8-0 run, got that lead back up to 12. They learned from their mistakes back in January. And when you can learn and improve in March, good things tend to happen. Absolutely. So for that, folks, that does it for our presentation of Horizon League semifinal basketball. Wright State, again, victorious tonight, 82-67. to We will be back tomorrow night as we await the winner of Purdue-Fort Wayne and Northern Kentucky for the Horizon League championship game here from the Farmers Coliseum. Unless you live under a rock, I'm sure you'll hear who we're playing tomorrow night. Absolutely. You'll find out one way or another. So, for Shay Neal to my left, for Patrick Schmolstig, back in our WWSU studios in Dayton, I'm Parker Testa saying good night, and we will see you tomorrow. So long from Indianapolis.